This is the new FLIR Lepton breakout from Pure Engineering. And what it allows you to do is to embed the FLIR Lepton long wave infrared sensor into your project. Long wave infrared sensors are essentially heat cameras. Uh, whereas most cameras use a sensor such as a CMOS or a CCD sensor which reacts to photons of light coming in and being stored as an electrical charge, this actually uses a sensor called a microbolometer which relies on long wave infrared coming in and actually heating up the pixels of the camera. A visible light camera will pick up light in the range of 400-ish to 700-ish nanometers. Long wave infrared is more like seven and a half to 14 micrometers. So we're talking about things that are orders of magnitude longer wavelength. And that means real heat. So you can see when I look at this sensor, uh, for instance, my glasses, which are optically transparent, I can see through them, it can't see through them. It's measuring the surface temperature of the glasses because when I remove them, you can see my eyes are obviously much closer to my core body temperature. Interfacing with this is actually pretty straightforward. It uh, starts up and it dumps uh, video frames over the SPI interface. I have it hooked up to a Raspberry Pi because Pure Engineering was nice enough to actually write some great example code that you load onto your Raspberry Pi, you load a couple of dependencies, and then you compile it, which is very straightforward. And they have instructions on how to do that on their site and we'll link to all of that material. Once that's done, you start the executable and it pulls up a window and you start getting video out of the camera. The resolution of this guy is lower than a lot of microbolometer sensors that you'll see, but that's part of the reason that FLIR was able to offer it at such a low price for what it is. At 80 by 60 pixels, it's a pretty good resolution for thermal imaging. This sensor actually has a very good range of temperature that it can sense from very, very hot to very, very cold. And it can be hard to represent that information as visible colors. So one thing that the software does is it actually adjusts the range of the color mapping on the fly. So you can take, for instance, this hot coffee cup, and as it enters the frame, the scale of the colors adjusts so that you get a good range of what's the hottest part of this coffee cup, not necessarily a great range of what's the hottest part of my hand. But if I block the coffee cup with my hand so that the sensor is only seeing me, it readjusts the scale. Now there are a few small gotchas with this module that you want to keep in mind when you're starting to integrate it into your project. One thing is that when you first start this example code, you may get a gray window with a red box in it and no response from the module. For whatever reason, on first startup, it helps if you actually remove the module from the breakout and then pop it back into place. It's not enough to deassert and reassert the chip select line, and it's not enough to reset the power. I'm not really sure why you have to pull the whole module and pop it back in, but it's a problem that can be fixed in the code, and the guy who wrote the example code says that he has a fix coming. Another thing is that this module is uh, fairly sensitive to electrostatic discharge, so you want to use best practices when working with it. Possibly wear an anti-static wristband, just be sure to discharge yourself on a metal surface and a ground before you touch the module. And it's less about the fact that it is a particularly sensitive module and more about the fact that it's a particularly expensive module. If you zap a MOSFET on your bench, you might be out 95 cents. If you zap this on your bench, you're out a considerably larger amount of money, so be gentle with it.